Tonight on To The Point, city council members demanding changes after a chaotic meeting. We can only model the behavior that we want to see in others. Their message to get things back to how they were meant to be. 24 hours after a student's body was found in the Calaveras River. New details tonight from the diver who found him. It's hard to believe that I did that in a half hour. Plus the EPA announcing new clean admission standards. What this means for the future of cars. Breaking news just into the newsroom tonight. The Associated Press is now projecting that California voters have approved Prop 1. You can see the numbers right here and votes are still being counted, but Prop 1 will allow the state to borrow more than $6 billion to build housing and treatment beds with the goal of tackling California's homeless crisis. Now, critics claim it threatens programs that are keeping people from becoming homeless in the first place, and Prop 1 is the first update to the state's mental health system in 20 years. And Governor Gavin Newsom released a statement tonight calling this a huge victory, writing in part, quote, now it's time to get to work repairing the damage caused by decades of broken promises and neglect to those suffering from severe mental illness. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on To The Point. I'm Alex Bell. City Council meetings are supposed to be a place where important decisions are made, but take a listen to what happened at last night's meeting in Sacramento. A loud and packed room right there. Dozens of protesters interrupted the meeting as council members were preparing to vote on a ceasefire resolution in Gaza and arrests were made. And now tonight, city council members and the mayor are demanding changes in order to get these meetings back to how they're meant to be. Our Jeannie Nguyen shares with us their message and what a political analyst predicts for the future of these public government meetings. In a packed Sacramento City Council meeting Tuesday evening, Amend the resolution. dozens of people showed up to voice their concerns calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. All of this came during the council's discussion of a resolution calling for an immediate bilateral ceasefire in Gaza. I see the middle fingers and I see all the rest in the air. That's fine. We're going to recess the meeting. But before any decision could be made, Mayor Daryl Steinberg called for a recess due to the continuous interruptions to the meeting. The meeting was delayed by about two hours with Sacramento police arresting 12 people for failing to disperse an unlawful assembly. We can only model the behavior that we want to see in others. Over the past few weeks, Council Member Lisa Kaplan says she's noticed meetings getting interrupted more frequently and she's had it. This behavior is like a bunch of petulant toddlers speaking out and yelling out who don't want to follow the rules. Both Kaplan and Steinberg have been the target of these outbursts in the past. Last May, a member of the Proud Boys made anti-Semitic comments causing police to clear out council chambers. Political analyst Steve Swat says he's not surprised by Tuesday night's disturbance. I think uh, people are so emboldened now. I mean, obviously it's a very um, controversial issue and it's very emotional, but also they see what's been happening in other communities and they think, well, maybe we should try the same tactics. But Kaplan says there needs to be decorum. No more shouting from the audiences. No more disrupting, and if it happens, recess, and then if it happens again, clear the chambers. With Mayor Steinberg focused on enforcing good behavior. I can enforce the rules, and that's exactly what I will do. Um, we're going to do our very best to listen to everybody, and if we have to, we'll remove people if we have to. And Ginny joins us right now. Now, you actually spoke with a woman who was at the meeting last night, but she didn't even get a chance to talk. Can you share a little bit about her experience? And also, for people like her that didn't get to talk, what do council members suggest that they do? Alex, that woman told me she spent four hours waiting to talk, and she even... Four hours? Exactly. She even listened and sat and listened to 70 people talk ahead of her before she eventually left because she wasn't feeling safe anymore. Now, Mayor Daryl Steinberg did tell me that, unfortunately, people like her were deprived of their rights. However, Council Member Kaplan tells me if that happens, she encourages people to write to their council members through email because they do eventually read their emails and respond. Now, we know that 12 people were arrested last night. What are police and council members going to do moving forward handling these situations? Well, police tell me they're going to handle this on a case-by-case -case basis, so they can't exactly give me a number on how many officers will be at these meetings as they come. All right, Jeannie, thank you so much. We appreciate the update. All right, developing tonight in Elk Grove. Crews are investigating how a crash involving a landscaping truck ended up inside of a dentist's office, and this happened on Franklin Boulevard and Laguna Park Drive. Officers say the truck veered off the road and hit the building. 
They say a person inside was hit by the car and pinned between the car and the debris. Fire crews were able to rescue them and take them to the hospital. Their condition is unknown, but we will keep you updated as we learn new information. Tonight, a man found dead at the bottom of an embankment near Lake Natoma has been identified as 27-year-old Nicholas Baker. State Park officials say they got multiple calls Tuesday afternoon about a body near Black Miners Bar. It is an area that's known for its spectacular views where many people visit to walk and bike, and people that we spoke to are shocked. It's surprising, you know. I mean, there are signs posted everywhere for people not to be out here, but, I mean, you can't really control what people do, you know. This has never happened here before. California State Parks say that they are investigating this death, and it's not clear what might have led up to it. And we know that it's been just over 24 hours since the family of Xavier Martinez got some closure after the Stockton teen's body was discovered in the Calaveras River. But now questions are swirling about the nearly weeks-long search efforts. ABC 10's Gabriel Porras has been on this story since the beginning and joins us tonight with some new details. Candles, flowers, and heartfelt notes left on the Calaveras River levee Wednesday. A big difference from the scene on River Drive for the past week as crews search with boats, robots, and sonar devices for Stag High School student Xavier Martinez. We didn't realize yet what's happened. What happened Tuesday afternoon is still processing for Juan Heredia and his family. When the scuba diving instructor dived into the Calaveras River on his own and started feeling around the river floor. 30 minutes into the search. Suddenly I saw uh, his tennis shoes. Juan's family called 911 from the levee and the sheriff's office boat recovered the teen's body. I was glad that me and my family were there to to help her. And While the discovery from a volunteer brings some closure to the family, law enforcement's failed nearly five day long search efforts have brought frustration and questions. I think if somebody um, will jump to do a dive the same day, they will find it. We tried to get answers to some of the questions about the search and the Stockton Unified School District sent us a statement. In the statement, the school district said in part, quote, the department used all resources available and even had neighboring agencies assist. The sheriff's department says it exhausted all of its resources. There's a lot of, um, you know, um, shrubbery, um, garbage underneath there, which made it very um, dangerous for any divers to go in there. It's hard to believe that I did that in a half hour. While Juan recognizes that law enforcement has better technology and training, he and some in the community believe things could have been handled differently. The police, the sheriff, the authority have to be more open. Juan says the recovery has left him with a message for the community. Everybody have to find a way to help somebody. And we want to mention that a memorial has been set up for Xavier on the levee. And while Stag High School is on spring break, we are told there are mental health clinicians and counselors available on campus for those who are looking for support. Tonight, three people are facing charges after Ceres police found 86 dogs in unlivable conditions. They were found at a home on Hollister Street, and during the discovery, police say an elderly woman and child were taken to the hospital. The boy is now in CPS custody. Still ahead on to the point, a new plan released by the EPA today to reduce emissions, what it means for the future of cars. Clouds moving in for tonight. Rain will soon follow. How long the rain and snow stick around in our forecast. Plus, have you been noticing higher prices at the pumps? We look into what's causing them. Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods with a look at our forecast. Another beautiful day, but I got to say, I <laughs> allergy season, I think, is hitting a lot of people hard, including myself. <laughs> I know. We're enjoying this gorgeous weather. Relief is in sight, though, because we're going to have that rain and cooler weather pattern taking shape. Now, this is all brewing out in the Pacific. The clouds that we're seeing right now actually just kind of priming us for multiple systems to come on through in the forecast. Our weather pattern is going to shift dramatically cooler and wetter. We've been in a favorable temperature pattern with highs in the low to mid 70s average high 67 degrees region wide. That's pretty much how things have been been unfolding since late last week. Right now we're in the upper 60s to right around six, six, uh, 70 in the valley near 60 for San Francisco 50s and 60s for the foothills and 40s for this year. Tonight we'll see variable clouds come through our forecast low at 47 degrees. 
We'll see basically a repeat for tomorrow before the rain and snow return on Friday. That's going to bring us cooling weather as well, down about 10 to 15 degrees from where we've been sitting with travel impacts, but also some relief in that pollen. This wet pattern looks like it's going to stick around through Easter as well. Our high pressure ridge that's been blocking us from this rain now starting to depart. And so by the time we get into our middle Afternoon on Friday, we're going to see rain in the valley, snow developing for the Sierra winter storm watch going into place on Friday morning. That takes us all the way through much of the weekend with nearly one to two feet of snow possible throughout the Sierra. Some locations up to about three feet of snow and in the valley we will get roughly about a half an inch to almost an inch of rain, about an inch and a half to two inches of rain for the foothills. Our highs for tomorrow in the 50s for the Sierra, 60s and 70s for the foothills, and we'll see that as well across the coast and inland areas. So again, a near repeat of today, just a little bit cooler, but the bigger changes arrive by Friday, and it takes us all the way through the first weekend of spring. It will also last into next week as well. All right, Monica, thank you. Next on to the point, the EPA laying out new standards for vehicle emissions. What changes you could expect? Plus, ABC 10 is in the community. Why we were with Habitat for Humanity today. It's being called the most ambitious plan to eliminate planet warming emissions from cars. The White House today announcing a series of rules that they say will avoid over 7 billion tons of global warming carbon emissions over the next 30 years. A major move just announced from the Environmental Protection Agency requiring the car industry to reduce pollution across their entire fleet in an attempt to push the car industry to make more electric vehicles. Today marks a historic win for public health, for the environment, and for the future of our country. One mile at a time, we're cleaning our air, we're protecting public health, and we're creating good paying American jobs. The EPA announcing that vehicle emission standards for cars built starting 2027 up to 2032 will reduce U.S. emissions by over 7 billion metric tons for over 30 years. It's all in an effort, they say, to reduce deaths, health care costs, and over $60 billion in costs for fuel, maintenance, and repairs by reducing tiny particles and other pollution from burning gasoline, in addition to reducing planet warming emissions. That means less heart disease. That means longer lives. Clean cars is really all about saving kids. Clean cars will help save our kids. The Biden administration tapping the brakes a little to give manufacturers more wiggle room. We gave the automobile industry more flexibility to achieve those environmental goals. Sales of electric vehicles have slowed, so automakers didn't think they had to reach stricter standards set a year ago. Giving the automobile industry more flexibility to choose different combinations to achieve our environmental goals actually gives their customers more choice. And the White House says car manufacturers will have many options to get to the admission limits it is requiring. That includes a combination of battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrids, and super efficient gas-powered engines. And your price points tonight. Following a meeting this week, the Federal Reserve has announced today that interest rates will remain on hold. The Fed is also signaling that we could see a rate cut later this year, and inflation has fallen significantly from a 9% high in mid-2022, but prices still rose 3.2% compared to a year ago, which is higher than the Fed's target of 2%. The economy has made considerable progress toward our dual-mandate objectives. Inflation has eased substantially while the labor market has remained strong. But inflation is still too high. Borrowing costs will stay between 5.25 and 5.5 percent, the highest level in more than two decades. This decision signals potential rate cuts later this year, which would offer relief to borrowers on home and car loans and, of course, anyone with credit card debt. Discount airline JetBlue is cutting some routes after years of losing money. The company says that it plans to stop service entirely to Kansas City, Missouri, and several South American destinations starting on June 13th. Nine routes out of LAX, as well as flights between East Coast cities, will also be cut. 
And if you've been noticing higher prices at the pump, you're definitely not alone. Gas prices in California have reached a significant milestone once again. Prices are more expensive now than they were this time last year by an average of about eight cents per gallon of regular gas. According to AAA, prices have gone up since last week by an average of nearly six cents per gallon across the state. In the Sacramento area, drivers can expect to pay about seven cents more per gallon than last week. AAA says that oil prices have jumped recently after Ukraine drones hit Russia refineries, and a spokesperson says that he does anticipate prices increasing another five to ten cents over approximately the next week. We do have a list of places to find the cheapest gas prices in your area right now on our website at abc10.com gas. And meet Sacramento Metro Fire Captain Randy Gross. He has served our community for 27 years and is one of the first firefighters in our region to die of cancer after assisting in the search and rescue efforts after 9-11. Gross and his canine partner, Dusty, they flew to New York to search Ground Zero for survivors, and they met then-President George W. Bush and later rang the bell of the New York Stock Exchange when it reopened. 20 years later, he was diagnosed with cancer, and doctors said it was because of what he was exposed to at Ground Zero during his rescue efforts. The Metro Fire continues to be devastated by job-related cancer. We've had three firefighters in the last six months that have passed away from job-related cancer. The California Fire Foundation broke ground today to expand their firefighter memorial at the Capitol. And we want to mention that 22 years ago when this wall was unveiled, there were 855 names etched onto that memorial. Now. There's almost double. With the expansion, there will be room for another 4,600 additional names. And here at ABC 10, you already know we stand for you. And that includes doing the work to support our community. So today, some 20 ABC 10 colleagues volunteered at the Habitat for Humanity site, helping build homes for hardworking, low-income families. And our Becca Habegger takes us to the construction site and shows us how this is really changing lives. At the start of a day of volunteering Wednesday morning, future Habitat for Humanity homeowner Shavonda Pitts called up her fellow future homeowners. I'm very proud of you guys. No matter what it took to get here, you guys have made it. All of the families participating in this affordable homeownership program are low income and currently living in substandard conditions. This is an unsafe environment. There's a lot of uh, gun violence there. Um, over the years. Pitts is a single mom of three working full time, and yet she and all these future Habitat homeowners are each putting in the required 500 hours of so-called sweat equity, working right alongside volunteers on Habitat homes. We started back in October. By the end of this week, I should have about 486 hours. All throughout March, Women's History Month, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Sacramento is hosting Women Build events as hundreds of volunteers work on this 18-home neighborhood called Cornerstone, as President and CEO Leah Miller explains. Here joined today with me is the ABC 10 team who are out here with all kinds of muscle helping us to put the final touches on the last nine homes here of the 18 homes that we're currently building. So this is cool. I'm here in the kitchen of one of the completed Habitat homes of the Cornerstone development. A family is set to move in here any day now. Families have moved into the other completed homes, which ABC 10 helped work on at last year's Women Build. It's exciting to see how far these homes have come in a year, welcoming hard-working families. This year, ABC 10 is working on the final nine homes of this neighborhood. These homeowners are set to move in sometime this summer. I'm appreciative of the opportunity, and we just can't wait to get there and, you know, might run through the house. <laughs> and say this is ours because we did it. And I say we because it was a joint effort. Pitts shared something her nine-year-old daughter said. She asked, was I going to take anything when we move? And I told her, no, probably just clothes and TV. And she said, well, when you're, when you're moving forward, you're not looking back. So I want everyone to know that on your way up, you don't have to go backwards. Continue to knock down the doors that are designed to keep you out. And the Cornerstone development also includes more than 100 units of affordable rental housing across the street from the Habitat Homes. Mutual Housing California built those. And altogether, more than 400 people will call that neighborhood home. We have more information on Cornerstone at abc10.com. All right, we have to take a short break. But next, we're going to show you what we're working on for tomorrow, and you do not want to miss it.
For years, the Department of State Hospitals has been working with a private health firm to treat and rehabilitate sexually violent predators so they can be re-released into the community. It's controversial, and many lawmakers and local officials feel the process is not transparent enough. Our Jeannie Nguyen has been digging into how this program works, so here's a preview of what we're working on for tomorrow. From El Dorado County. I do not feel we safe for our community. To Placer County. Having somebody like this released in our community is egregious. Many community members say they do not want people convicted of sexually violent crimes in their communities. We want to be reasonable, but we need you to be reasonable in this process as well. There's got to be another way. There's got to be another place. Watch our full story tomorrow at 6.30 on To The Point with Alex Bell. And our Jeannie Nguyen has been spending months digging into that program. Again, you can watch the full story right here tomorrow night at 630. And you already know, if you have something that you think we should be looking into, make sure you reach out to me and the team. Remember, strangers are people we just haven't gotten to know yet. So take a little bit of time to get to know someone. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good night. And I will see you right back here tomorrow. Hey, it's Alex. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching the To The Point team and I love hearing from you and I hope that you'll stay in touch. And don't forget, you can always email me and the team at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send us a text message at 916-321-3310.